Let's go on then with the natural exponential function. So the number e is, you can see here, is defined as the value that 1 plus 1 over n to the n power approaches as n becomes large. And then we talked about limits a little bit earlier and sort of what value is a function approaching at infinity. That's a, a limit and something that you will definitely hear more about in in calculus. But if you see that what is going on here, then this is very similar to that formula that I I actually showed you for the compound interest and I'll write the compound interest formula up here again so that you can see it. So it's P times 1 plus R over N to the N to the, and this was to the T power. And so this part right here actually is important because this is approximately, all right, this part is approximately e to the r power. So that means that if you want just e to the first power, then you would just put a, a 1 right here for the, for the r. All right, so these numbers, when you put in a really large value for n, then this is what you get. You get something that's approximately e or e to the first power. But if you were to put a, a 2 here, you would get e to the second power, or 3, e to the third power, and so on like that. All right, so now the natural exponential function is really the, the same as what we were talking about before, the y equals b to the x. But now this b is just equal to e. All right, so that's all that we're doing here, just making the, the b equal to the e. So since like e, right, e is approximately 2.718, you can see it 28 up there. And so most people use just 2.72, just so that, that you know, like that, that's what most people would use. But generally though, you also, wouldn't even use that approximation. You would just do this right in the in the calculator, all right? Just so that you know that also. But since the uh, e was greater than one, that means that this is actually going to be an increasing function. So it will definitely be increasing. And then the domain is still going to be all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. The range is still zero to infinity. The asymptote is still y equals zero, and it still has an intercept at zero one. And it also has also has a point at at one b or one e. All right, because the base was e in this case. So that is what I'm talking about is that this is exactly the same, but e is just this irrational number that we can't find the exact value of anymore, and we're just approximating it. So we have x and y, so there's a point at 0, 1, and at 1, e, which is about 2.72. So here it is, here is the graph. And so here's the point at zero one, and here's the point at one comma E. And of course, again, it has an asymptote. This graph has an asymptote at Y equals zero. All right, so now let's look at another example here of graphing these, and again, this is very similar to what we were doing before, but the uh, the the function is just a function with a base of e. So here we have sketch the graph of each function and determine the domain range and any asymptotes. All right, so 
Here we have a negative e to the x, so that just re re uh, reflects an x axis reflection. So now what we're going to do then is look at the original graph that we had, and we're just going to do an x axis reflection of that graph. All right, so if I do an x-axis reflection, that means that the point 0, 1 will become 0, negative 1, and the point 1, E will become 1, negative E. So 1, negative E. And so then this is the graph of the function. All right, so hopefully that makes sense that that was just an x axis reflection of the graph that we had previously and that I still have the asymptote at y equals zero and now though I see that the graph is decreasing and the domain is still negative infinity to infinity but the range is now negative infinity to zero the asymptote still y equals zero, and the intercept is zero, negative one, and it also has a point at one, negative e. All right, so now let's try another one here. So what I, I will do here is I will remember if I had the negative in the in the exponent, I could think of this as a y-axis, a y-axis reflection, right? Or I could rewrite this as, as e to the negative one to the x, and then that's one over e to the x power, and one over e is, and I'll, I'll show you that one over e is, all right, so one divided by e is approximately 0 0.36787944412 to the x power. And so that means that this will have a, uh, this will be a graph that is actually uh, decreasing because the b is between zero and one. And it has points at, so it points at 0, 1, and 1b, but that would be 1 and about 0.36787944412, right? And so then all I need to do is graph this. So I already answered most of the questions. This is decreasing, and the domain did not change. And the, uh, the range is just 0 to infinity. Asymptote still at y equals 0 since there weren't any vertical shifts. And then the intercepts are at 0, 1. And there is also a point at, at a 1 and 1 over e. All right, so now... All I need to do is graph this, so here we go. So let's graph this function here. What a time to be alive, right? So there's a, a point at 0, 1, and at 1.36787944412, so a 1 and a little bit uh, over 1, uh, uh, yeah, so like somewhere right about there and then I can graph this and I know it's decreasing so it looks like this so here is uh, 0 1 and here is 1 1 over e and then I can even draw the asymptote on there if I want to make it stand out that I know that this graph will not go below the the x-axis all right, so that is it for the graphing of these, and now we will do a couple of 
continuously compounded interest problems. So let me give you a second on that in case you need to write that down. went out here at my home here so uh, I'm just going to uh, con continue on here like nothing happened I guess so um, well uh, this is a little bit th yeah so th this is a little bit strange it, it looks like in all honesty what happened is that the Wi-Fi went out at my house so yeah, so it looks like the Wi-Fi went out at my house, so I, I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but actually everything seemed to go out for a minute, so I'm, I'm apparently back, but uh, so let's just figure out what's going on here. This is, a, in my opinion, a, a very strange situation when the Wi-Fi goes out, and I really have no control over anything so uh, at least it it wasn't anything worse right than just a a couple of a second power outage here it could always be worse that's how I think about it so now let's just I guess move on like the like the power is back on it seems like it, when you're happy that the power is back on, that that you know, there that life in general is pretty rough these days. So, uh, continuously compounded interest. So, if you remember the interest formula, it was a of t is p one plus r over n to the n t, and then I said that this part here was e to the about e to the r so it p e to the r t which is how they get this formula here so this is really the same formula as before but now instead of it being like compounded uh, compounded quarterly or annually or monthly or daily or whatever it might be now it's compounded continuously which means that this is the most amount of interest that somebody could possibly uh, get in in a compound interest situation is when the interest is compounded continuously or or all the time or infinitely many times all right so find the amount that results from investing five hundred dollars at six point seven percent for six years compound it continuously so we're going to find the amount that re results from investing five hundred dollars at six point seven percent for six years compound it continuously so this compound it continuously tells us that we need to use the formula a equal p e r t and so a we don't know p is five hundred dollars the original investment and then 
the R is 6.7% or is a decimal 0 0.067 and T is the number of years. So that will be six years here. So A is missing here. So here I have it. A is 500 E to the 0 0.067 times six and then 0 0.067 times 6, so point zero six seven times 6, that's point four zero two. so 500 e to the point four zero two. and then again, if I were taking a multiple choice test with a calculator, I would leave the answer like that, but we have a calculator available, so 500 e to the power of point four zero two mm -hmm. is about 747.4056663 or about $747.41. All right, so you can see here that after six years, the person made uh, about, two, uh, about, well, uh, half of the money, almost $750, right? So if the person started at 500 and almost made 750, that's actually really good. I mean, that's why this isn't really too much of a real world situation at that high of an interest rate, but it is an idea of, of the possibilities. All right, let's try another one. An investment of $6,000. Earn 7% interest, compound it continuously. So what will the investment be worth in 35 years? All right, so now let's see. So how much will it be worth in 35 years? Well, this is, this is interesting, okay. So, that was the initial investment of $6,000. And the R was 7% interest, so 7% or 0 0.07. And it's compounded continuously. And they want to know what will the investment be worth in T equals 35 years. So compounded continuously means to use the formula a is P E R T. So we have A is 6,000 E to the 0 0.07 times 35. So 0 0.07 times 35 is going to be 2.45. So this is 6,000 E to the 2.45. And then I'll, I'll use a calculator to do that so e to the 2.45 times 6,000 so that will be uh, $69,530 and about eight cents all right so you can see that after, after 35 years you make even <laughs> well a lot more money than what your original investment was. And that's, again, why people usually, like, go into stocks and bonds and things like that, because, like, stocks and other investments, usually time will give you more money overall. And now let's try another example. So here we go. It is an account now contains $8,000 and has been accumulating 8% annual interest, compounded continuously. How much was in the account six years ago? All right, so now we have the amount, and we have the, the P, we have the R, and compounded continuously means that this is going to be... Uh, Oh, yeah, we're going to use the formula A equal P-E-R-T. So the 8% is 0 0.08. Now, here is 
what you do need to sort of remember is that the A is the final amount and the the P is the original amount and the R is the the rate and T is the time, right? So they they told us that the time was six years ago. So that means that the the final amount is the amount now and the original amount was the amount six years ago. So that means that the the A is the eight thousand here and the oh that was R. I can't read my handwriting. R <laughs> P. Alright, P is unknown. So the amount six years ago is the amount unknown. Alright. So in this case we have eight thousand is equal to P E to the point oh eight times six. And then 0 0.08 times 6 is going to be the uh, 0.48. So we have 8,000 is equal to P E to the 0 0.48. And then we can divide by E to the 0 0.48 on each side. So 8,000 over, here I'll write it over here, 8,000 over E to the 0 0.48 is going to be our P in this case. So if I go ahead and I calculate this, it will be 8,000 divided by e to the power of 0 0.48. And that will tell me that I, I started six years ago with $4,950 and about 27 cents. All right, so now hopefully that all made sense and and if there's any questions, again, please feel free to ask. But we're going to do our last example here of the, of the section here. So the function P of T is equal to, and this is maybe timely or not, but uh, 50,000 over 1 plus 60e to the negative 0.9t describes the number of people who have become ill with a virus t weeks after its initial outbreak in a city of 50,000 inhabitants. So how many people were initially ill with the virus? All right, so all I, I know is that uh, initially ill means at t equals zero weeks. So in other words, what they're asking me then is find find p of zero so that's fifty thousand over one point or one plus sixty e to the negative zero point nine times zero so then that will be fifty thousand over one plus sixty e to the zero all right, 60 e to the 0, but e to 0 is 1, so it is 5,000, so that 1 plus 60 times 1. 5,000 over 60 plus 1 is 61, so 5,000 divided by 61 is 819.67, or about 820 people who were initially sick after 1... Uh, uh, what is it? Yeah, after zero weeks, after the initial outbreak, all right? So now, how many people were ill at the end of the third week? So T was in weeks. So this will be T equals three weeks. So T equals three weeks. So that means we need to find P of three. So it's 5,000 over... 1 plus 60e to the negative 0 0.9 times 3. And so I am going to calculate this for you. So that will be a 1 plus 
e to the negative 0.9 times three. So that's about, uh, did I say like 50, uh, that's supposed to be 50,000, 50,000. I didn't write enough zeros, 50,000. All right, 50,000. So 50,000 over about 5.0323307640. So then if I, I do the 50,000 divided by that number I just got, there are, well, uh, 9935.753896 or about 9,936 people who were, were sick with the virus or ill with the virus after the third week. So I, I think that the important thing here, though, is that you really should maybe look at the, the percentages even, because if you look at it, like initially it was 820 out of 50,000 people who were, who were ill, and that is times 100% is about 1.64%, right? Uh, actually, that is, all right. And then if you have 9,936 people ill out of 50,000, then that would be a, about a times 100%. That would be 19.872%. So in three weeks, it is possible for a, a good chunk of people to become ill. And this sort of model here shows the idea uh, behind like illness outbreaks that it doesn't really take a long time for them to get out of control like this. So anyway, that is all I have on uh, this topic of, what was it, the... Well, the natural exponential function.